In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can make this cute bunny design just in time for Easter using your iPad and Procreate. Honestly, this is probably one of the easiest to follow along with tutorials that I've ever done. You can make a professional looking design like this even if you can't draw a straight line. The key is gonna be understanding the program, knowing the steps to take, what brushes to use, and that's all covered in today's video. No time lapse, no edits. You can follow along every single step of the way. So if you want to follow along and draw with me, keep watching. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and draw this super easy, simple bunny. Starting out, I'm using a 3000 by 3000, 300 DPI canvas. It's an RGB canvas. For my brush, I'm gonna start out using my illustration liner, which is part of my children's book set for Procreate. That brush set's available now. I'll leave the link in the description below, and we're gonna be using a few different ones in this pack. Also, my color palette, I've got this pre-made, so if you wanna download the exact same colors that I'm using in today's video, you can get that for free if you go over to my website, bjdell.com, underneath the YouTube reference materials page. Once again, I'll leave it linked down below. You can download that for free, plus there's a video at the top that you can check out that walks you through how to install a palette and procreate if you've never done that before. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and use this color here, the first one on the top row. Like I said, illustration liner here. And that color is pretty close to the white of the background. So I'm gonna change the background color here just so this will show up a little bit better. And we'll go to just a gray color here. Now that we've got that set, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw an oval here in the center for my bunny's head. Drag and drop that color in. And then I'm gonna come up here to my layers menu and I'm gonna make a new layer. This will be for the body. We'll go ahead and drag this down below the head layer. Just gonna draw an oval in here. Drag and drop the color. And then I'm gonna grab my arrow here for transform and we'll just kind of warp this a little bit to have the body just a little bit wider here at the bottom, a little bit flatter there. All right, so we've got our body. Next up, let's come back up to the layers menu. Let's make another new layer here. We'll drag this down below the very bottom and we'll go ahead and just draw our ears in here got one, I'm just gonna connect the line here, and then drag and drop the color in here to fill it in. Now, I'm gonna come up here to my layers menu. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this one to the left, and we'll duplicate this. Back up here to the arrow then, with uniform selected down here, we'll go ahead and flip this horizontally. Turn on snapping and magnetic. And then we'll go ahead and slide this one to the right. So we've got our left ear and we've got our right ear. Now I'm gonna come back down to layer three here. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this to the left now and we'll duplicate it. I'm gonna come up here to my color palette now and I'm gonna switch over here to my pink. We'll drag and drop that pink in there. And then back up to the arrow again with uniform selected. We'll switch that actually to freeform this time. And we'll just start to kind of drag this down using that green node there. We can kind of spin this once we turn off snapping and magnetic. Just reposition this until we get it exactly where we want it. a little bit further and that looks pretty good there okay now that we've got that we'll go ahead slide this one to the left and duplicate it arrow again flip horizontally we'll turn the snapping back on we'll slide this one to the right and then we need to now drag it back on top of that layer three right all right there we go we've got that one in there so now 
I'm going to go ahead and grab this top layer three right, drag that down, and then we'll pinch these together. So now the pink are all on one layer and the background ear here, those are on one layer. With this layer selected now, I'm going to come back up here to my color palette, switch back to the base color, and we'll come down here and start to draw on some little feet. Connecting the lines there. Filling in. We could connect and drag and drop, but this is pretty small, so we can just fill it in by hand here. So we've got the feet, and coming up here, We'll just pull the arms down on the side. All right, looking good. Back up here to our layers menu now. I'm gonna come up to layer one, which is the head, and we'll make a new layer on top of this so we can do the eyes. Coming up here to my color palette, I'm gonna choose this brown. And we'll get these little eyes in here. Get one there. And then one over here. If you want to get these the exact same size, just like we did the ears, you could always go up there and duplicate this and move them from side to side. Totally up to you. Now that we've got those, let's go ahead and come up here to our color palette. And we're going to use a white here, which I'm going to drag this into the color palette because I don't have this in here. So we'll put the white there. And we'll just do some dots in here for the eyes, little reflections. Okay, got those. Let's go ahead now. Coming back up to our color palette, I'm going to switch over to the pink again. We're still on this top layer here. Let's just draw a little nose here in the center and get that filled in and then back up here to the white again and we'll just do a little highlight there on the top and then one more time we're going to make a new layer we'll drag this underneath that layer we just did I'm going to switch back to that brown color for the eyes. We'll just do a little triangle here underneath the nose for the mouth. All right. I want to add some whiskers in, but I think we'll do that later. So there's going to be the base shape for our bunny. Pretty simple. This next step is where we're really going to make this more professional looking, more of a children's book illustration look. So let's do that next. Coming back up here to the layers menu, layer one down, I'm just gonna go ahead and tap on each of these and set them to alpha lock. This means that we'll be able to color on these layers and they will stay inside what we already have colored. They won't go outside of the lines. So all those now are set to alpha lock. So let's start with layer one, the head. I'm gonna come up here to the color palette. I'm gonna switch over second row now. I've got this orange color here. And this is where we're gonna switch our brush as well. So I'm gonna to start to add in some shading here and I think we'll use a couple of different brushes for this. First one, let's go ahead and use the wet wash watercolor here. I need to see size wise what we're looking at. So size, I've got this set to about 20% and opacity about 27 28 percent opacity and i'm going to have the light source coming in from this way so we'll do shading back here on this left hand side so really light here i'm just going to start to build up a little bit of a shadow here along the back pressing harder on the left side and then easing up the pressure as i move in towards the middle here all right We've got that. Then we're gonna come up here to our layers menu again. We're gonna come down to layer two, which is the body. And we'll do the same thing down here. I'm gonna come in harder underneath the head. And you'll see that's why we use two separate layers for this. So it's got more of a shadow there underneath the head. 
with them being two separate layers, the body and the head, it made it easy to break them up like that. Otherwise, we would have had to really come in here and try to do all that by hand as far as doing that hard line. Now that we've got that, we can go ahead and come back to the layers menu. Come down to layer three, which is the ears and the body, or the ears and the, the arms and the legs. Get some shadows in here. Same here. I think here I'm gonna drop the size of this probably down to about 5%, so it's a little bit smaller because I want the line visible here too to break up the body from the arm. And you'll see I'm actually starting adding the color here in further up on the body so it bleeds down. This brush is pretty big, so doing it like that, starting further inside, lets you control the brush a little bit more. If I started down here, it's just gonna fill in everything. So we'll get that line knocked in there and kind of come over here for that right hand, or the left hand side there. Same thing here, you can see how far I'm outside of what I'm coloring in. Just gives me a lot more control there. All right, now that we've got this done, I'm gonna come back up here to my color palette. I'm gonna switch over to this darker color here. With that selected then, I'm gonna come back up to the brush library and let's go ahead and use Let's use the textured shader highlighter. And for this, I'm gonna drop the opacity down to about 50%. And size, let's start out with about a nine. Try this and see. I'm gonna begin where I started again, that head layer. So we've got that selected. And let's see. I think we'll make this a little bit bigger, maybe about 13%, let's up the opacity to about 70. Just kind of following along with the shading that I already did there. This is just adding a little bit of a tech, different texture. Back then to the body here, we'll do the same thing. Getting that different texture in there. Over top our previous texture, so they kind of work in tandem there. And then back to the ears. And the legs and the arms, once again, dropping the size down here. And bringing in that texture where we applied the previous one. Going really light right now. If you find that it's getting a little bit too dark, you might be pressing too hard. So if you drop the opacity down, it's really just how your hand kind of reacts and, and the pressure that you're used to giving the drawings. All right, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and add in some highlights now. So let's start back up with the head again. I'm gonna switch over here to white now. And for this one, let's just use the wet wash watercolor. And I'm just gonna bring in some white here along the head. Switching back to the body now, bring some here on the belly. And then we can do the same thing here with the ears and the arms. I'm just gonna hit just this side here. I'm not gonna go over here at all. All right. So that looks good. Next up, let's go ahead and do the ears, the inside. So layer three, we're gonna use that second color in on the second line. Still using that wet wash water color. And I'm just gonna bring in some shadows here. See, this really starts to bring out the textures, make it a little bit three-dimensional. 
so it doesn't look so bland and plain, just like our, our basic shapes that we were using. This is where it really drives home what you can do with basic shapes. You don't have to be the best artist in the world. You just have to get the start and then, like I said, just using some of these other texture brushes, you can really add a level of professionalism to your design. All right, so now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and come back up here to our layers menu. I'm gonna come up here to the nose and eyes layer. We'll go ahead and make another new layer here. Color, I'm gonna switch this back to the brown that we use for the eyes. And then for the brush, I'm gonna switch back to illustration liner. And we'll just go ahead and draw in some whiskers here. Now that we've got those, I'm just going to flip these once they're duplicated. So with that layer selected, we'll duplicate, hit the arrow here, flip horizontally, bring these to the right, we'll lock them in here, and then I'm going to go ahead and pinch those together. So they're all in one layer now. And then I'm going to drop the opacity of these so they're not so dark. So if we hit N for blend mode, we drop the opacity down. Probably do about 24, 25%. I think that looks pretty good. We can lock it in there. All right. Now let's go up here to our layers menu. The background color, I'm gonna switch it back to white here. This is kind of our little bunny design so far. So let's start to add in a background now. So coming up here to the layers menu, I'm gonna come down to the very bottom here. I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm going to drag this down underneath the very bottom. Color palette, let's go back up here and let's select this blue color. I'm going to go ahead and use a different brush here. So let's go up to our brush library, still with the same set. We'll use that wa wet wash watercolor again. And I'm just going to start to bring in blue here in the background behind the little bunny. Just going really light and just going back over to build up the color so I've got total control over how dark or how light it is. I think that looks good. Now let's go up here to our layers menu again and let's make another new layer. We'll drag this down. Actually, let's keep it on top of the sky here. You can see that just made a new group. That's not necessary. That's just how it worked out. So I'm going to come up here then to the color palette and select this green color here. And just add in some ground texture here. Or ground color. So I'll get that green in there. And then coming back up, we'll use this darker green here. And just kind of throw a little bit of a darker shadow. I'm going to drop the size of this down to 2% now. We got a little bit of a different color there for the shadow. Then coming back up to our layers menu, let's make one new layer on top of that one. And let's go ahead and use this green third one over. I'm going to switch the brush again here. For this, we'll go ahead and use, let's use the ground texture for this. So with that selected then, let's see, size-wise that looks pretty good. I've got that set to about 27%. So we can just tap here and add a ground texture, a little grass texture here. Just trying to get it placed where I want it. I think that looks good. Now coming back up to the layers menu, let's go ahead and alpha lock that grass that we just did. So we'll alpha lock that. Coming back up here then, we've got that darker green. Let's select that. And for the brush, let's go back to that wet wash watercolor. We'll come in and just kind of darken up the bottom here. Just a little bit. And then holding down 
eraser will set our eraser to whatever our brush is set at. So now our brush is set at that watercolor. And I'm just gonna start erasing the top a little bit. So you'll see these kind of fade down as they go there into the grass. All right, that looks good. Next up, let's go ahead and coming back up to the layers menu, let's select our sky here, layer eight. We'll set this one as alpha lock as well. Coming back up to the colors then, I'm gonna go to this dark blue here I've got. Still sticking with that wet wash. We'll just go ahead and just darken up the sky over here a little bit. So I'm gonna go about 17% here. We'll just add just a little bit of a mix of color there so it's not just one solid color there. All right, so that looks pretty good. I think one last thing we can do, we can add a little bit more texture to the rabbit itself. So let's finish it up by doing that. If we come up here to our layers menu and go to layer one again, which is the head, let's go ahead and make a new layer here on top. We're gonna tap that. We're gonna set it as clipping mask. So what this does, it works like alpha lock that we've been using so far but it's on a separate layer. So this is going to allow us to color in. It's gonna stay kind of locked into what we have on that round circle. It's not gonna go outside, but since it's a separate layer, we can erase, we can adjust the blend mode without affecting that bottom layer. So with that done, let's go up here to our color palette again, and let's use that darker brown color here. Switching the brush then, let's go ahead and use the dash pattern texture. Now this one is a little bit different. You'll see here grain scale, that's marked here and a few of these other ones. So changing the size in the brush is not actually gonna change the size of this. To change this, you actually have to move into the brush studio. So if you tap on the brush itself, it'll open this and then you need to go to grain, and then the scale here is gonna determine how big it actually shows up on screen. So let's try, let's try 10%. Not sure size-wise what we're gonna need. 10% might be just a little bit too small. Let's maybe go 13. Yeah, and I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so what I want to do here is I kind of want this to flow in the same way as the shadow that we've already got. It's going to be just kind of a fur texture here. So now that we've got that, it looks, once again here, just super basic, much like our basic shapes that we use, but we're going to be able to fix that. So if we come up here then to our Layers menu, let's go ahead, tap on the end for Blend Mode, and we'll drop the opacity down to maybe about 15% there. And this also just looks like a really hard edge here. So if we go ahead and go back in with our wet wash watercolor eraser, we can kind of fade that in a little bit more here. So it looks a little bit more natural. It's not as jarring there. All right, so we've got that. We're gonna do the same thing here to the body. So tapping this, we're gonna make a new layer on top. We're gonna to tap that one, set it as clipping mask. Come back to our brush. Same thing here, you kind of pull around that texture. And for the blend mode, what do we have that other one set at 15? Yeah, 15%. So we'll end for blend mode, down to about 15% here. Coming back in with the eraser then. Fade that in and make it look a little bit more natural. I think I'm gonna pull some of this texture out of the top one here, with the face, so I'm gonna come back up to layer 12. Because the way these meet up right here just looks a little bit off. So pulling that out so they're not overlapping there looks a little bit better. 
Same thing here then, layer three, the arms and the legs, new layer here. Tap that again, clipping mask. And going back to our brush. Just hit some here. Back up to our layers. And for blend mode again, down to that 15%. Using the eraser again. Pull those away from the edge there. So we just got a little hint of them back there. I'm gonna try that one more time back there at the back. I think I got a little bit too much erased. This is where I need to start closer to the center and pull out here. So there we go. And then finally we'll do the same thing here on the ear. that in there and then once again just erase repeat the same thing here on the right hand side okay last but not least with illustrations like this I don't like them to have such a super hard edge around here so this is where I'll go ahead and group everything together and do a blur or flatten everything this is up to you if you want to take this step so from here what I'm gonna do is, you might wanna group these and make a duplicate copy because I am gonna flatten everything to merge it. Totally up to you if you wanna take this step though. So I've got the entire body now all on one. And then I'm gonna go up to Adjustments and Gaussian Blur and just slide this to the right, just to blur it ever so slightly. About 3% looks pretty good, I don't want it too rigid and too perfect on those lines. The blur gives just a little bit more of that illustration feel. And then finally, I'm gonna go ahead and sign this. I always sign though with my other cartooning set and using my standard anchor. So I'm gonna switch over to that and then come down here and sign this and we will be done. Last but not least, everything is shifted kind of towards the top here. So one of the benefits of digital art, I'm just gonna grab everything here, layer-wise, and with the arrow, I'm just gonna move this down towards the center, so that way it's a little bit more centered there on the page. So there you go, a quick little tutorial on how you can draw a design without really any drawing skills at all. So this just goes to show you the level of professionalism here, I think is something that you could see in a children's book, something that you could see in the realm of children's book illustration. So don't beat yourself up if you're not the best drawler. It just goes to show you learning the tools and techniques that you have at your disposal with a program like Procreate, using the brushes that are out there and then learning you know, how to use the layers and the different options can really increase the level of professionalism of your designs. That being said, if you liked today's video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend who might get some valuable information out of it as well. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that and hit the bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. Also, if you take part in any of these tutorials, you follow along, I want you to post your work online, share it on Instagram or Twitter, and if you do, make sure you tag me. I love to see what you're able to come up with following along to my videos. So if you're on there, tag me at BJ Dell because like I said, love to see your guys' work. As for me, I can also be found online at bjdell.com, and that's it. So until next time, keep creating. Thank you.